Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting a simple beach seascape um, of a sunset scene um, inspired by this photograph that I took um, at my local beach a few weeks ago. I want to keep it nice and simple and sort of semi-abstract, um, just focusing on the colours. Um, I'm going to have it as if the sun has already set and maybe just one figure and a dog, something like that. I'm going to be using Saunders Waterford cold pressed paper. It's taped to my board with decorator's masking tape and my board's at an angle of about 45 degrees so that gravity can help with the painting. I'm going to be painting wet in wet um, so that will mean wetting my paper thoroughly and then painting a graduated wash on that for the sky and the sunset and the water. I'm going to start off by um, just lightly penciling in a horizon line with a ruler. Um, some people will say that you shouldn't use a ruler when you're painting but I think that's um, it's a little bit silly really. It's like why wouldn't you if you've got one? Why wouldn't you prefer a straight horizon to a wobbly one? And now using a pencil I'm just sketching in a, a, a gentle diagonal shoreline from right to left. Now I'm going to use my Pro Art uh, Ron Ranson Harky brush. It's a size large and I'm going to wet my page all over completely. Make sure it's nicely soaked with water so that I can get some really nice wet in wet diffusions. Now without dipping my harky brush into the water again I'm just going to mix up some um, burnt sienna which has got a nice earthy orange and I'm bringing that across horizontally just above the horizon line. Um, I'm hoping that gravity will bring the paint down. I'm just encouraging it down and putting a little bit of that same colour across the water area. The next colour I'm going to use is a Lizarin Scarlet Lake and I'm just putting it on with a smaller brush top and bottom of the burnt sienna. I know it looks very um, linear at the moment but I'm hoping that it will diffuse nicely. I've washed the burnt sienna out of my harky brush, squeezed out most of the water from it so it's not flooded and mixed up some um, cobalt blue, a fairly rich mixture and using horizontal brush strokes I'm bringing that down in a graduated wash and the idea is to bring it down to meet those other two colours so that we can get a nice gentle diffusion of colour. I'm looking for a really nice soft graduated wash for the entire sky, sea and beach area. So that's a bit of blue on the um, left corner across the water and then some more of the burnt sienna and the alizarin scarlet lake and a touch of blue into the beach area. You can see everything softening and diffusing really nicely. And next with a clean damp three quarter inch flat brush I'm going to lift out some of the paint in a few areas just to soften back and leave some very subtle white or almost um, white marks in the water and across the horizon line those will probably mostly disappear as the paint dries and diffuses, but I will be left with some slightly lighter areas across the water, um, the water's edge as well, and that should all add to the subtle effects that I'm trying to get from this first wash. I'll lift a bit out across the horizon line as some of the Scarlet Lake was pooling up a little bit there. So again, the clean damp brush will sort of suck any 
um, wet areas of paint away subtly like that while everything is still dry. Because my paper is cotton, it'll stay wet for quite a long time, almost as long as I need it to, at least half an hour. And that's why I use the Saunders Waterford paper. Just finessing really, smoothing things out, feathering things a little bit, just to get the wash looking how I want it to. And now I've mixed up a mixture of all three of the colours that I've just used, the Alizarin Scarlet Lake, the Burnt Sienna and the um, Cobalt Blue into this lovely purpley colour. And while the paint is now damp, not soaking wet, it's just damp, I'm carefully putting in a bit of shadow um, across the waterline. Like the rest of it, it'll soften and diffuse and dry back quite a bit lighter, but it should just give me the start of uh, the waterline that I can then emphasise and paint wet on dry um, later on. So now it's just a matter of um, feathering things out a little bit, um, smoothing out the horizon line. Again, that um, red paint is just a bit, bit too wet there, but if I'm careful, I should be able to soften that back. And then feathering through a few um, lines with the flat brush that make it look a bit like the rays of sun and color coming from where the sun has just sunk below the horizon. And now it's time to step back, not touch it anymore, and leave it to dry completely. It's now bone dry and ready to paint, and it's dried really nicely. I like the soft diffusions, but we've got lovely, clean, transparent washes of colour. Um, I've had a bit of a practice on another piece of paper and um, I'm going to be trying to paint a figure of a man and his dog in silhouette uh, walking across the sand along the water's edge. So I'm going to be following that as a guide and hopefully it'll go okay for this painting. I've mixed up my three colours again into an even darker purpley mixture along with a bit of added Payne's grey and using the painting that I practiced earlier which is you can just see a little bit of that just in the left of shot I'm copying my character my figure onto the painting I'm just drawing the silhouette of a person his head will be just about on the horizon line so that he is in proportion and in perspective on the beach walking along the water's edge. It's very important that you try and position your heads of people on a flat landscape close to the horizon. The reason for this is, as a viewer of the painting, um, it's assumed that you're standing on the same level as the rest of the painting, and therefore uh, the head will be at your eye level, roughly, as most humans are, are similar sizes. So on a flat landscape, that's the theory behind it, is keeping the eye level of the person that you're painting at the same as your eye level, um, which is the same as the horizon. I'm now painting the dog next to the man. I'm connecting the two shapes together um, so that it looks like they're walking along together um, along the beach. And I shall connect them further once I've finished painting the dog uh, with a reflection, a sort of shadowy reflection in the wet sand.
I'm just trying to keep this really simple so that it gives the impression of um, a person and a dog. I'm not trying to paint forearms, four legs and things like that. I'm trying to paint figures that have got a little bit of life, a bit of movement that are just created by painting the rough silhouetted outline. A small Chinese calligraphy brush like this is, is, is a generic unbranded one. It's quite cheap, easy to find online and absolutely ideal because they've got a really nice point so you can use them for quite delicate work like this. Using small horizontal brush strokes, I'm coming down from below the feet of the figure and the dog just trying to get the illusion or the suggestion of um, a reflection in the wet sand. I'm trying to leave gaps so that the sand shows through between the reflections and feathering them out on either side. Um, of the sort of the shadow shape as well. So it is doing the job of both. It's a shadow and a reflection. I'm not in any hurry doing this as it's wet paint on a dry painting. So there's no timing issues with the paint. Try not to get too fussy. I think that's about okay. That was some slightly darker, a bit of Payne's gray just dropped into um, across the shoulders of the, of the figure. The next thing I'm going to do is take the same mixture of paint um, and using my flat brush I'm going to establish a stronger shoreline or waterline. As I said at the beginning this is going to be semi-abstract so I'm not trying to get in too much details of the water. I'm just going to suggest it by putting in this darker water line um, and this darker shape will be joined so to speak through the figure and then carry on and get a little bit fainter and paler as the waterline goes off into the distance. I'm going to bring some marks using the flat brush and different shades of this colour, some darker and some lighter, across the rest of the beach now and, and try and just bring a bit of shadow in across the foreground and a bit, bit more texture just to finish the painting off. say so this is just the same colour again. It's um, cobalt blue, burnt sienna and alizarin scarlet lake mixed together in various um, combinations just so there's some subtle changes in tone and hue. I've now mixed up an even paler mixture and I've turned to the squirrel mop for softer, more blurry marks into the distance and I'm going to use a little bit of that mixture and run it carefully across my horizon line. Taking my time, um, that will dry back to virtually nothing but it just gives me that little bit of differentiation between the sea and the sky. It defines it just a little bit more. And I've added even more Payne's Grey to my purpley shadow mixture and just adding a few darker accents here and there in the shadow and along the sea line and across the beach here and there. Finishing touches. This is where I have to try not to overdo it. And I think that's about enough on the beach. I just want to take that same dark mixture. I'm going to paint in a few seagulls. 
I think a few gulls will balance up the composition, but also I think they'll do a lot for it. Um, it just kind of adds to the feeling and the um, the overall composition with the solitary figure and the dog and the shoreline. I'm dabbing out some of those smaller gulls that are in the distance so that um, they're a bit paler. I think I'll just have one more larger gull here. And then a couple of smaller gulls closer in to the figure. And, and compositionally, I think that they help to um, keep the eye on the figure as the, the eye is drawn towards the figure and the dog and moves around the painting I think the birds kind of link the sky to the land. So I'm going to call that finished and remove the masking tape pulling it away from the painting um, to reveal that nice clean white border and I'm pleased with that I think the colours are nice and transparent um, I think the atmosphere is just what I wanted it to be. There's a sort of very peaceful, calm feeling to it. So thanks so much for watching. Um, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And thank you so much to my lovely Patreon group who support this channel. I'll see you again soon. Take care then and happy painting. Bye.